Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Redberry Leo here, and welcome back to another video. It's sort of Civil Air Patrol related, sort of not. It depends on what you would like to view this video for. If you are trying to sew things onto your uniform using a sewing machine, then great. If you are just learning how to use a sewing machine in general, this should be a good video for you. Today's video, I want to talk about how to use oh this thing. It's not the lightest thing in the world, it's my baby. It is ye old sewing machine. Now, not all sewing machines are created the same way, and there are different aspects to sewing machines that are different. Like, sometimes you've got settings up here and up here, and those adjust, like, the tension and how far apart the stitches are, and then these are, like, the different stitch types. Um, and, uh, like, some sewing machines are just one setting. You don't get to pick. So, the video that I'm doing today is to explain how I use this sewing machine in order to actually get to the point where I am ready to sew stuff onto my uniform. And there will be a part two to this video, so if you already are familiar with how to use a sewing machine, then you can just skip to that video when it's posted. This one's going up first. So when that video comes out, you can look forward to that one. But for this video, I'm just talking about how sewing machines work. So let's talk about our friend here. I'm gonna put it right here because it's very heavy for me to hold. And <laughs> it's okay. Um, hello. So let's go ahead to a different camera view so that we can take an up close look at what the different components to the sewing machine are. Okay, welcome to a new camera angle. We're trying this out. I'm sorry if I'm a little shaky. I haven't really done videos like this before, but I'm over here. So hello, and I don't know how good the mic quality will be, but we'll go with it. Okay, so there are different components throughout this machine, and it can be a little bit complicated when you've never used a sewing machine before. But we're going to look over the different components and understand what each of them does. Not all sewing machines are the same, so we're just going to be looking over this one. And if your machine has similar capabilities, then you should be set and ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the power button. The power button is located right here, and this is where you plug in your pedal. And so one of the components in a bag I have, I have a little bag that I keep right next to my sewing machine at all times, it's the pedal. So I'm going to... Show you the pedal right here. Oh, there's a little string right here. Whoops. Get back in there, mister. So this is the pedal. The pedal, it pushes down, and you're supposed to put it on your floor like that, and then push down with your foot like that in order to adjust the speed. So the, the further down you push it, the faster the sewing machine will go. And this little prong piece is what goes into the machine right here. And then the other component, the other end, is the actual plug and you're supposed to be able to plug this in you plug that into your wall and you plug that into your sewing machine so laid out it's supposed to be like that cord is separate plugged in somewhere else and then you've got your pedal on the floor and this component is supposed to plug in right here right there just like that and so if i had it plugged in it would be on once i Turn that on. Okay, but we're not turning it on and it's not plugged in, so I'm going to leave that stuff to the side and continue on with our next component. So, the next part that is, I would say, one of the more important things is understanding that you need to have a spool of thread. So this is just a normal brand, Dual Duty is a very typical brand that you can find just like at Walmart or at Joanne Fabrics, Michaels, all those kind of stores. Wait, does Michaels actually have thread? Hmm. And we've got the little holder here, and so you're gonna have to poke a hole into your spool, and then it'll be able to sit nicely here. And I'm gonna show you how you can actually thread it into this machine. So here's my white thread, it's a little bit hard to see, so I might actually pick a different thread color, because I'm actually going to be using dark blue when I'm doing my tapes. So let me find dark blue in my bag here. Bag is this dark blue? Is this dark? Oh, there's a little white thread. Get out of here, white thread. I would say this dark blue is very similar to the tapes, 
let me just grab my tape here. We'll compare the colors. The thread is fairly close in color. It might actually be a little bit lighter, maybe just a little bit. Um, try to get as close as you can to the color that you have. I'm going to check my bag a little bit more to see if I have any other colors. I don't think I see any, so I'm just going to go with this dark blue color. Now this tape also is not ready yet, so I'm going to go over that in the next video. Because as you can see here, the edge is clearly going to go over the edge of the pocket. So, going back to our spool of thread, I'm going to kick that white one out of here so that you can see that dark blue one taking shape. Hello dark blue. I'm going to put you on here. And we're going to first do the first step. And it actually has little numbers. They're hard to see. Whoop. There's some of the numbers right there. So it goes one. It goes two, three, four, into the needle. Okay? So step number one. The first thing we need to do is put it through this little hook. So I'm going to put it underneath there. Whoop. There we go. Look at that beauty. And then we're going to follow underneath the two just like that. And then there's this thing right here. Um, sometimes I'm gonna put the thread to the side for just a second. This may not necessarily be up because it actually goes up and down. Whoop. Hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye. And so as the needle is going up and down, you can see here that this thing pops up and down with the movements of the needle. So there's a little knob here on the right side of my machine. And as you twist it up and down, it does that movement of bringing the needle up and down. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my thread again. And now that this is up, I'm going to make sure that it goes through there. And I think it got a little wonky because I was going up and down, up and down without it. So there we go. And I'm just gonna go through in there. And you should see it hit the little notch right there. Okay, and so then we bring it all the way down. And the next step is to fish it through that little hole. The little hole in the needle. Now this can be a little tricky, especially because I am doing it in front of camera. And there's a ton of fuzz on my machine. I was actually, I was making hats at one point and there's a lot of white fuzz from those hats that I was making. But you're gonna try to fish it through that little hole in the needle, and it might be harder to see because of my lighting here, but you should be able to see that the thread is going through the needle now with that little white fuzz that I was talking about earlier. And you wanna make sure that you pull it through entirely so that you've got a little bit of a tail. If you don't have enough of a tail, then when the machine starts, it'll just pull really quickly back up and then it'll get stuck in this compartment right here. This compartment right here is where we've got our light bulb, so when we turn our machine on, then it, it'll be going all crazy. And then I'll show you here as well, this view as well, where it goes up and down, up and down. Whee! See that? Whee! Fancy! Anyway, so those are the steps that you need to take. Oh, I think I missed this one. I'm going to make sure that it's lined up there. Because this, this actually holds the string in place. It's a little hard to see, but that, that four is supposed to be for that. And then it goes into the needle. Okay, so that is the bobbin on the top. And we, we've got to take care of something. Oh, there's a secret compartment? What? Yes, there is a secret compartment here, which we do need to go into in order to actually do our process. Because as you can see here, it's a little hard to see, but... We've got a white thread on the bottom, and it's very white, it's a white thread, and then we've got a dark blue one for the top. And whenever you are sewing stuff, you need to make sure that the top and the bottom are the same color. You need to make sure the top and the bottom are the same color, and they are currently not right now. Um, some machines are a little bit different, but this actually has a nice little diagram that explains, like this is how you put it in. This is how you take it out. And so with this machine, I just have to pull this little thing and it immediately comes out. Okay, so that's that's how we take that out. And I can just drop this out. Goodbye. You've been evicted. And we're gonna grab a color that is similar. So 
go back into my little bag of goodies. I've got bags of various colors. I'm going to go ahead and, and pick a color. Oh, that's probably very loud. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's so loud. Oh. We've got a dark blue one right here. And it, it is dark blue. Like, I can compare the blue and the black, just as an example. That's the... This one is the dark blue, and this one is the black one. Whoop. So I'm going to be using that dark blue. We're just going to put this container to the side. Thank you, Mr. Container. And this is going to be very difficult using one hand, but I will continue to do so. So as we say in our diagram here, this component is supposed to be facing like that, and then the tail of the string is supposed to be facing basically the opposite direction of that tail. So I've got my string here on the bobbin, and there we go. So then there's a little crack right here, which I need to make sure that the tail goes into. I'm going to try with one hand. This is challenging with one hand, but we're going to do it. And we're going to put it through until it gets to this bigger hole. Come on. I can do it. There we go. I did it. Yay. Go team. Go team. Okay, so then we have to make sure that it goes back in here and lines up that little notch on the top and just push it in until you hear a snap. Okay, and then when we're reloading this and we're, we want to pull the string back up to the top like how that white one was earlier, I'm going to actually put my camera here. Let's see if I can do this with, with two hands. I don't know if I can balance this. Let me see if I can balance this. Oh, there we go. Good. Okay, so I've got one hand here, and then my other hand is going to go back to that knob that adjusts how the needle is going up and down. So I'm going to drop this down, hold the thread down, and it just caught the thread underneath. And so if I zoom in here, I bring my camera close, look at that. So it just grabs that thread from underneath. See that? Yay! Magical! Magical! So now we've got two threads. One that's going to be on the underneath side, which is coming from here. And then we've got one coming from the top side, which is right here. So I'm going to close this bad boy up. I'm going to move my white over here and put our component here. This is actually just storage. Um, I use it to hold some extra needles, extra thread, and all of that. Don't really need it right now, so it's just going back on here. Now, if you're ever doing something that requires you to have space underneath your machine, like right now it has space, and now it does not, that's another use for this and being able to take it off. I normally keep it on when I need to use the surface right here to be able to hold whatever I'm sewing. So when I'm doing this thing, and I'm doing it on the blouse, then I will have that capability. So there are other things on the machine here. And the next one that I'm gonna go over is this setting right here. Oh, you can sort of see my reflection, hello. So these are the different settings. Um, it goes one through nine. I have never needed to use some of these at the end. Um, they are very confusing, you don't really need them. The ones that I use, especially for tapes, is number one here. Number one is just a straight line and you can tell because it's a line and it's in the middle. This one it does it off to the side just a little bit and so if you needed like extra something like extra close to the edge but you want the foot to be able to hold the fabric down then you could use that one. I've never used it personally. This one is a zigzag and then this one's like a looser zigzag. Um, the other ones like you might use in different instances I have not but you know it's whatever works for you and the way that you switch between them is you just rotate through this wheel and it shows the different settings in this visual all machines are created differently they're different so uh, that that's just something to keep in mind that your machine may not have that but it's something to know and then this is the length of the stitch i have just kept it at three because that's really the only thing that i've really needed if I needed the length of the stitch to be shorter or longer, then I would just adjust it going this way and that way. Okay, and then the width. Um, the width is just adjusting where the needle is located as you're doing your stitches. Keep it at five for that centered position. And then this thing is something of a back pedal. 
So the reason why you might use a back pedal is because you don't want the stitch to come undone. And so if you go forward, like stitch forward, backward, forward, it's basically like if you're tying a knot. And so to activate going backwards, you just press that down. And then when you're done, you push it back up. And it does a little thing to the feet right here. See that? Ooh, they dance. Okay. So that's just a quick summary of the different components of the sewing machine. I hope you enjoyed that quick overview, and if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments down below. So I enjoyed putting together this video because I know I was able to be taught by someone who had experience with sewing machines, and I know some people have asked, how do I sew my patches on? Well, this is the machine that you would do it with. Oh, one quick last thing. There's a little lever right here in the back. And as you push it up or down, it actually does something called raising and lowering the foot. And so that's just a quick introduction for you on this machine. Um, like, I mean, I'm not going to go super in-depth, like if your foot falls off and then how to fix it. Uh, if, if you guys ever have questions of like, what, is, what do I do? Then most times it, it, it's depending on what kind of machine you have. But look how cool the inside is. Look how cool that nice machine is. That's why it's so heavy. So thank you guys so much for watching. And that is all, fo folks. Until next time. Toodles.